Hi everyone, Greg Phelps here, uh, and I'd like to continue the presentation of some best practices when developing reports using Power BI. Uh, as I mentioned last time, I ended up going a little overboard on this fourth pillar, reports and visualizations, so I've split the video into two parts to reduce the session viewing time. Uh, so here we go with part two. Uh, as I mentioned in the earlier videos of this series, through my own Power BI learning over the past few years, I've consumed many online resources which have been instrumental, but I quickly became overwhelmed by content and I ended up making my own notes. Uh, I wanted to collapse those notes into easy to digest PowerPoint files and I'd like to, to take this opportunity to present part two of volume four. Uh, this presentation will be available to Enterprise DNA members in the near future where hopefully it will be of some use to them. Uh, this is by no means an exhaustive list or even the top practices, merely some of the ones that I've incorporated into my own development. Uh, I've discussed this topic with other Power BI users to get their input, but again, these are my own takeaways. Also, uh, the best practices will evolve over time as new and enhanced capabilities are introduced both in the Power BI application and by the Power BI community. Uh, the audience should always be first and foremost in the developer's mind, uh, and any steps you can take to make the report experience better for report consumers is well worth the effort. Uh, I find, and I think many Power BI users find, uh, that it's easy to get lost when clicking graphics and various visuals on a page, uh, and I often don't know what filters I've actually applied. So I like to create a bookmark of the initial state of a report and create a, re or, sorry, a reset slicers button uh, that actions this bookmark so that it's always front and center for users to easily return to the report, initial report state. Uh, also, uh, if report space is available, and I endeavor to always leave enough space. Uh, I like to add a slicer selections echo area to display all the current slicer selections. Uh, one of the quote unquote features of Power BI is that when you select a single item from a drop down slicer, uh, that value is displayed. Uh, but when you select more than one value, uh, Power BI displays multiple selections, which I find doesn't give the user confidence uh, when exploring insights. Uh, I used an example of this technique in my submission to Enterprise DNA Challenge number three, and there's a YouTube video by Enterprise DNA showcasing the technique. Uh, there's a link to the video in the description down below. Uh, one of my favorite techniques is to make your report more seem more app-like, um, and that is by adding interactivity to buttons by altering the on hover behavior of the buttons. Uh, you can change many different properties such as uh, text font size, text font family, text color, fill color, or line weight. Uh, I recently showcased some of these techniques in an Enterprise DNA YouTube video and there's a link to that video in the description down below. Let's just take a quick look uh, for the fun of it here. See as I uh, am hovering over these buttons, there's slight differences in the behavior and I can just by selecting one come over here to fill for example the default state is white and the on hover it's uh, a different color. Uh, another way uh, you can increase the usability of your report for report consumers is to ensure uh, that your visuals look as intended both on your report page and also when focus mode is being used. Uh, as an example, when you're using a dark background and white text, uh, it's not uncommon for the visual text to not be visible when focus mode is used with the visual. Uh, one way to handle this is to apply the dark back background color at the visual level and set the background transparency to zero. So let's just have a look. Uh, if I do focus mode on the donut chart at the left here, we can see that none of the detail labels are visible. Um, here and if I come over to the formatting pane we'll see under background here that the color is, is white transparency is set to 100 so it looks right on this page but if I come over here to this one we'll see I actually do use the same color uh, as the background for this one I have the transparency set to zero when I do use focus mode on this scenario you can actually see the detail labels uh, next, as many of you know, uh, I'm a big fan of the Smart Narrative Text Box visual in Power BI, and I frequently use them to display static text with dynamic measures. 
Uh, again, there's a YouTube video by Enterprise DNA showcasing its usage, and a link to that video is in the description down below. The data type of a column is important. Uh, many times, data will be loaded into a Power BI file, and while the data may look correct, uh, for example, like a date, it will actually have a date, time, or a text data type. Uh, best practice is to always check columns that hold date data and ensure they are of the date data type and if not, um, that they are properly converted. As an example, let's take a look at the following table. Uh, there are three columns uh, here, and it appears that all three hold the same data. Uh, only the first is actually of the date data type, uh, so only it should be used in any date calculations. Um, let's just go over to um, data view here. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Uh, we can see that the first column is of date data type, the second column is of date time data type, and the third column is actually of, of text data type. Uh, you can convert the type of the column here, and let's just do that here. Uh, Power BI throws a warning, um, and accept that warning and go ahead, and there you go. It's actually of type date now. Uh, this also happens frequently with columns that hold integer or decimal data. Uh, the column may have been imported and identified as a whole number or a decimal number correctly, or it may have a text data type and just look like an integer or decimal. It's important to ensure that numbers are in fact numbers in the data model. Uh, another important thing to do is to identify the data category. Uh, this is of particular significance with location data as it uh, allows the mapping services in Power BI to identify the columns correctly. Uh, columns that hold data for city, state, country, latitude, longitude, etc., for example, uh, should be identified as such. And let's just have a quick look here. Let's go over to the regions table, and we can see that city uh, does not have a data category. We can apply that data category of city. To that column and we'll see a globe icon show up uh, in the field as well. Same thing for country, it currently doesn't have a category. Uh, we can change that to country and once again it will show up with a globe in the field well. Uh, all visuals on a report page interact with each other by default. In Power BI uh, the report developer can control which secondary visuals are affected by the selections in a primary visual. Uh, to achieve this, select the primary visual on your report on your report page, then click the Edit Interactions button on the Format toolbar. Uh, then go to each secondary visual and use the uh, Filter, Highlight, or None icons to enable or disable interactions as desired. Well, let's just uh, flip over to Power BI and have a look here. Uh, so my uh, primary visual is the sales table. Uh, I come to format, uh, edit interactions, turn it on. I now can select a uh, filter for each of the three uh, bar charts on the top row. I'm going to select none for each of the uh, filter, or sorry, each of the bar charts on the bottom row. Uh, now you can see when I make a selection, the top rows change, uh, the bottom rows do not. Uh, Sam Mackay has a terrific example of this technique in his YouTube video on changing the interactions of your visuals, uh, and there's a link to that video uh, in the description down below. Uh, I find that when I use the selection pane to name and order all visuals on my report page, uh, iterative development is much easier uh, as I can select visuals for adjustments. Uh, further, the ordering uh, in the selection pane Let's me visual see, visually see what's in front of or above one another, and again, the order can easily be adjusted. Let's just flip over to Power BI here and we'll have a look. Uh, so here I have four visuals on this page. Every one is named, uh, even if the title is not displayed on the report. Um, once again, it's easy to select them from here. Uh, there are generally a number of columns that are necessary in your data set. Uh, but that might not be useful for your report consumers. Uh, so it is a good practice to uh, hide all columns unless they're specifically requested. 
um, and I generally hide columns of certain types, uh, including all key columns as they're only used for relationships, uh, all sort columns as they're only used for adjusting the sort of display columns, and all columns that are or will be used only for measures uh, to prevent, prevent users from using the quote unquote naked columns in visuals. Um, you can come, sorry, you can toggle uh, the fields pane to see columns. Uh, all columns are only visible columns by right clicking anywhere in the fields pane and choosing view hidden. And we'll just do that a few times for you to see. Uh, there are certain items that I include on all of my reports. Uh, I always want to ensure that the correct report and correct version are being tested, deployed, and used. Uh, so one of the first questions I ask any report consumer uh, when they're reporting an issue is what is the report ID and version version date. Uh, once these have been given and I've confirmed that it is the correct iteration of the report, uh, only then will I proceed with the analysis of the issue. Uh, if the user, for example, is using an old version of a report, I'll tell them to try the current version and see if their issue still exists. Um, as a bonus, uh, it makes it easy to identify reports that are in need of adjustments when business rules change, and it also gives report consumers confidence that business rule changes have been applied. Uh, I found this benefits both the report authors and report consumers tremendously, and I highly recommend it as a standard practice. As far as performance goes, uh, there are a few things one can do uh, with visualizations to reduce the time required to render a report, uh, or sorry, to render a report page after making a filter or slicer selection. A uh, few are, uh, try to minimize the number of visuals on a report page. Uh, if you can, try and combine visuals such as uh, replacing many different card visuals with a single multi-road card. Uh, you can also use a matrix visual or a table visual instead. Um, and sorry, with the matrix uh, visual, you can select values, show on rows. Um, you can also replace many different line charts with a single line chart and using small multiples. Let's just flip over to Power BI for a second. Um, if we go to the performance page here, uh, we can see that a normal matrix has columns for all the values. You can also use Oh, with it, columns and show on rows. Uh, where is it? There is value show on rows. Okay, uh, um, another useful technique is to reduce the number of visuals on a page uh, by adding pages and moving visuals to the new pages. Um, also, try to use slicers of the drop-down type. Uh, list type slicers need to issue a query every time a page opens, uh, whereas slipers, slicers of the drop-down type only issue queries when a selection is actually made. Um, also, uh, collapse the filter pane before saving your Power BI report, as again, uh, an expanded filter pane issues a query every time a page opens, whereas a collapsed filter pane only issues queries uh, when it is expanded. Well, that's it for part two. Uh, hopefully you can add some of these ideas to your Power BI toolbox, and they will prove useful in the future. Uh, along with part one, uh, this was the fourth volume discussing some of the best practices for the fourth pillar of Power BI development, uh, namely reports and visualizations. Thanks for watching, and I wish everyone the best on their Power BI journey. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.